Paul, we might have to make a correction. Oh, no. What stupid thing do we do this time? I know, right? It's... <laughs> it's... Put it on the list. Well, first of all, it's raining out. Yeah. You know where it's not raining? Arizona. Yeah, that's fact. So I It never it rains there. there. No. <laughs> so, guys, make sure in the description of this video you check out Mr. Rogers Homes. Uh, Sean, the top 1% realtor in Arizona. If you're thinking of moving down to the Valley of the Sun, Sean's your guy. Tell him Paul Mario sent you. I think we made a mistake. Okay. Because we love... To hammer this point down of saying it's Leslie Frazier's defense, not Sean McDermott. Yeah. And I see like little flashes of Frazier all over the defense when certain things happen. Mm-hmm. Uh, can you can you just frame that? Can you just like give an well, example? Well, um, because yeah. I, there's systemic. We talked about this before. There's systemic differences between the type of defense that Sean McDermott loved to run in Carolina and the Tampa two, which yes, which is what Leslie Frazier typically runs. Right. Yeah. There's very, very systemic differences, and uh, just, just give it, just give an example of, of what specific. Well, I mean. think if you were going to talk about a guy, I mean, I mean the the quintess, for me the quintessential king of the Tampa two is Derek Brooks playing yeah. in the middle. If you were to do a, I mean, he was undersized. I mean, he was like six feet, like two thirty, two twenty five, something like that. Right. But if you were to do a draft profile of Luke Keekley versus Tremaine Edmonds and compare it to, to Derek Brooks. He's more of an Edmonds mold. Yeah. But playing in a McDermott defense, we look at McDermott, we look at the McDermott defenses, their bookends were guys that just would set the edge, let everybody else clean up everything. Right. You have four bodies on five. Frazier's not like that. He he likes to bring a little bit more pressure. He likes to have a little bit more heat. He likes to play a little more man. And when he runs decides to run that Tampa too, their safeties are bangers. Um, not to say that McDermott's safeties weren't, but they were always supplemental to the corners. In Frazier's defense, the, the safeties are the most important positions. Yep, I agree with that. Uh, even though you got Tredavious White, I'm not saying it's not important, but that's that's where the blending comes in of McDermott versus Frazier. But the more moves that get made and the more of the defensive philosophies that go on, I don't know if we could say that's 100% Leslie Frazier anymore. Oh, so you think we're, we're at the transition? I... I, I I mean, he should get a head coaching gig next year. Leslie Frazier, if they have a top 10 defense, we'll get a head coaching job somewhere. It was probably a bright idea for him not to take any of the jobs that were available during Mm. the playoff run. But the Bills also proposed the rule that you can't hire coaches until after the playoffs are over. So the Bills proposed that rule to the rules committee, which I think everybody in Buffalo went. I mean, this... You know, coaches getting hired during the playoffs is not something that we've ever been a victim to. (laughs) You know, like, over the past 25 years, typically that wasn't a problem for us. Yeah. Right? But this year became a glaring problem, and it was a source source of contention. Now, are the Bills – did the Bills suggest that catching wind of the Vincent rule? Because if he gets hired next year – does that does that come into effect, or am I wrong? No, you still get the you still get the compensatory picks. Two third rounders. You still get the compensatory picks. Right. So the. Do we want to explain it real quick? Yeah, let me get the let me get the specifics on because I don't want to misquote it. Yeah, I read it. It was. The, oh, okay. It, it got. It got passed. Troy Vincent proposed a rule that if um, a minority coach was hired of a high position, offense coordinator, defense coordinator, something like that, the team that is. Losing the coordinator will receive two third round compensatory picks in the following draft. Right. I think it is you had to, the coach had to be on your team for two years or more. Yeah. So I think there's like a time frame to it. It's not like you can hire a guy for one year, he takes a head coaching job the next year, and you get the compensatory picks. Yeah, but there was some, some backlash in it for those of you that want to look it up and, and see it. There was some backlash in it to say, like, okay, let's say. Let's say I'm, I'm a team in the AFC, mm-hmm. and I want to hire Eric Bieniemy, mm-hmm. But why would I want to give Kansas City two third-round right. picks? Yeah. Like, it's, it's, 
they said it eventually could hurt absolutely the the possibility of minority hiring but it's it's one of those things that it, he kind of snuck it in under the radar mm-hmm. troy vincent when, when he did it but anyway the point is that rule is now in effect mm-hmm. so if the Buffalo Bills were to lose Frazier next year, they get two third-round compensatory picks for the following draft. That all being said, is that what you're saying? You're saying McDermott's preparing his defense for – because it's always going to be overseen by him. Right. So he wants his guys in there. Right. Frazier's like, okay, you want me to make dinner with this? I guess I'll make dinner with this. Well, you know? yeah, and I mean, Frazier having to play nickel at basically every snap last year is certainly not a Frazier thing. He doesn't like it. No, that's not a Frazier thing. No. Tampa 2s depend incredibly on their linebackers. Like incredibly on their linebackers. Now, is nickel, was that due to personnel? Because I think, I, I don't know, Mar. Like, it, you look at college, right? Yeah. And when do you see college run 21 personnel? When are they running 21? Like, the banger teams do, but that's it. Like every Big team, 10 used to all the time. Every team's running three three wide with the tight end who can catch now, right? Like it's yeah. every team's doing it. So at some point you have to look at going with smaller linebackers. Now it's called a nickel, but, and we've been using, you know, safeties to play there. But the reality is very soon you're going to see a shift. If you're not seeing it already to six foot tall linebackers that can just fly that they're just, but they're a linebacker. They're safeties. They're just, yeah, they're just safeties. The blend of a safety that can play in the box and a linebacker that can cover. Right. I don't see a lot of difference in size between Poirier and Milano. Well, what I'm saying is the difference is at some point you're going to draft a guy (coughs) who's been playing that specific position. Yes. As opposed to draft a guy you're bringing down. I don't know, Paul. I, mm, I don't know. Why do you think a lot of teams like... Those wide receivers that used to be quarterbacks, because they see the field differently. Buffalo is definitely on that list. Transitioning a guy from safety who happens to be a little bit bigger Mm -hmm. down to linebacker, he's already seen the entire field all the time. Mm -hmm. So if you bring him closer to the action, he can he can recognize it faster. You think? Mm, That's a good question. That's a good question. I like that. I don't know. It's interesting. Well, it's fun. So future fitting and looking at the defense from top to bottom, right? At the defensive end position, where are you? Oh, my God. Like, that to me is where – and, again, there's Paul's right there. I know. Okay. Uh, and, again, I know that's that's a totally different episode. But if you're just talking about bringing in a defensive coordinator, you're going to bring in a defensive coordinator by saying, oh, by the way, our defensive ends are made up of a second-round draft pick and then, you know, two guys who uh, are buying retirement homes in Arizona. You know, with their signing <laughs> bonus money last year, like, why? What? What about that is appealing to you? Like, what about that is fun? Like, I'm looking at that, going, yeah, no, uh, thanks, but no thanks. Well, no, I think that the discussion, because it's just like if you're trying to sell a house. Mm-hmm. Maybe this, maybe John. Maybe yeah, there we go. Um, maybe see. The secondary mm-hmm. is your island kitchen that has heated floors, granite counters, all new Gorgeous. sterling silver. It's right. amazing. So you have a 30th pick, that's your CB2, Hyde, Poyer, and White. If you're if you're a defensive coordinator coming into that, then you're like, well, you know what? We got some water in the basement, which is your defensive end. Okay. It's a little old. <laughs> there's some there's some you know, there's a problem with with the drainage. There, the there is, there is. But the point being is this. Okay, listen, um, I could hire somebody or I can get somebody that I know in my travels to fix that leak. Mm-hmm. But this this kitchen's amazing. I'm, I'm not going to find this kitchen anywhere else. I'm only going to have this kitchen for two more years. You, you know, yeah. You know, the, you know the, the basement is like the foundation of the house, right? That's like really expensive. I understand to that. However, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> We're I know. I disagree more on the analogy what you than we are in the episode. No, I know what you mean by the by the, <laughs> the discussion where if you don't have that front wall, it doesn't matter who your secondary is. I understand, but that's 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 still alluring to a defensive coordinator coming in. Yeah, but I don't I don't see a splash play for a defensive end at thirty. And even if they do, it's not going to be a guy that's going to move the needle for anybody. Yeah. Uh... 
uh, just AJ Epinesa picked what twenty some picks earlier. Mm-hmm. Is that what you're thinking? Is that you think what you're getting? It is the AJ Epinesa pick twenty picks earlier? Yes. Okay. Oh, was he? What was he? Fifty-two, fifty something. Fifty. Who cares? There's one pick before J.K. Dobbins. That's what most people care about. <laughs> That's one pick before J.K. Dobbins. I mean, if the Buffalo Bills are are, are picking with their wallet, <laughs> you know how Edmonds or not not Edmonds. Um, oh no, Edmonds too would, would eventually. Uh, Allen's contract got accelerated because he made a Pro Bowl. Yeah, to play so many percentage of the snaps. Yeah, you bet, yeah well, you're not worried about de- Yeah, never. They're never going to meet the play requirements. So <laughs> just wrap that defense. Your fifth-year option won't be much. 